Hello there and this is Dazzatron's Diorama Llama. Welcome to another video tutorial and in this one I'm going to show you how to make an Aztec statue diorama. So I thought I'd do a bit of a, a callback to some of my early videos where I had a desk bot. So my desk bot for this video is New Age's Death Charge. So this is a third party transformer. It's at a legend scale and it's actually a retool of their previous Cyclonus, Cyclonus mold. Um, but this is a really, really good version. It's almost a triple changer. Um, not quite, but you'll see what I mean um, if you pick this toy up, but a really good bot that I would highly recommend. So here's one that I made earlier. Um, and this is, as I said, it's based off kind of Mayan statues. Um, that you might see on a temple or in a Mayan forest. Um, it's not a direct copy, but you can see where I've taken the ideas from. Um, I have created a template for this um, using Procreate on the iPad, and I will make that available in the comments or the description below. So do feel free to print and use that as you wish. So the first thing you need to do is to take a decent kind of sized piece of styrofoam as I've mentioned on many occasions before, you can glue your styrofoam pieces together if you don't have a thick section like um, the one you can see on the screen there. So I think that's about four inches by four inches. But if you've got, say, a two inch block, you could glue a couple of those together, um, let it dry overnight, and you can kind of cut that down as you would, you know, in the normal way. So just to give you a few idea of the tools that you might need, you will need a scalpel, you will need some mini files or a large file. Um, you might want to use a floristry knife, as you've seen in some of my previous videos, a sand block or sandpaper. Um, screwed up piece of foil, which is great for adding texture. And actually one of the best tools uh, for, for this video anyway, is just a regular pencil. And you just saw a sharpie pen there as well, or felt tip is quite useful just for when you're marking out your lines on your styrofoam. It tends to show up a bit better. So the first thing you need to do is to take your template and just kind of get the right size that you need for the styrofoam. Um, you could do that on a larger piece and then cut the whole thing down in one go. I do find it's a bit easier if you've got either an off cut or... Um, a smaller, more manageable piece. It's just easier to work with. So I'm just cutting the template down to size, folding where the corner would be. So as you can see, you've got a side view and a front view there. And I'm just marking out, I'll say the dimensions. And then once you've cut that down, it is worthwhile just going over it with a sand block or a file. And then just obviously check the template again against the block. So I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is to actually transfer the design onto the block itself. So to do that, you'll need a sharpened pencil. So all you're going to do is you're actually going to just press quite firmly over the top of the, the lines that are on the template. And what that will actually do, the, the pressure from the pencil will then transfer kind of an indented line into the styrofoam itself, because the styrofoam is quite soft, it will kind of show that line up quite well. So you might have to go over it a few times or a couple of times, depending on how much pressure you put on there. Don't worry if it rips the paper, um, it doesn't matter. You, you're not gonna use that again. So it's just so you don't have to draw it freehand on top of the styrofoam itself. So if you're not so good with your art skills, you can just trace what I've done there directly onto the block. And you can see there with the light shining on it, that transfers quite well. So once you've done that, the next thing to do is to kind of create those indents and make it look like it's been sculpted. So just to give you an idea here of my kind of early attempts, if I turn this over, you'll see my previous attempt. Um, thankfully, I was able to still use the styrofoam block. Now I've used the, the rod that comes with the styrofoam cutter a few times. You'll have seen me use it on the Castle Grey School uh, makes. 
and it works really well the issue with it because it's a hot kind of a piece of metal it kind of creates this kind of bleed effect so as you're pressing the the rod to the styrofoam you're not getting a small line as you can see there which is what you get from a pencil um, but it gives you quite a thick line and it's a little bit too kind of in your face um, I wasn't able to get many fine details with it so back to the drawing board um, I decided just to use the pencil itself to see how that would work in terms of kind of creating that kind of um, sculpted look and it worked brilliantly um, really easy to use so all you're doing is you're just going over the kind of the template lines that you've already put in there when you've transferred the design as I said it is useful to have a sharpened pencil because you can actually use the edge of the the graphite um, to kind of again shape the styrofoam so all you're doing is you're just applying pressure so once you've drawn over your initial line you're just then going to slant the pencil or put it at an angle and then again applying a little bit of pressure just kind of push into the styrofoam and it kind of creates this more kind of sculpted look so it looks like you know if if the Mayans were kind of chiseling this out of stone um, it's kind of creating a more three-dimensional effect so we're going to do that from all angles so you're going to go over your lines initially <clears throat> just pressing quite heavy um, you'll get a feel for it as you press it into the styrofoam so you'll know how heavy or how light to go as you start using the pencil and then as I said from one angle you're going to go back over the line to create this kind of indent or this kind of slanted or beveled edge and you're going to do the same then from another angle so as you can see now I've gone over all of my lines <clears throat> And I'm just going to use that technique that I showed you earlier, um, just on each line or each section. And just take your time on this, just slow right down. It's almost like you're shading with the pencil. But it really does make a difference. It really does kind of create more of a 3D effect. So as you can see now, I've use that kind of beveled edge effect all over and so those lines are much stronger they they kind of stand out a lot better so the next bit is to actually cut away the mouth section so there's not a lot of sculpting involved with this um, but the mouth section and the top of the head is, is really important in creating that more kind of three-dimensional effect but yeah just a little thing to point out here on the template I missed off one of the lines so it's worthwhile just kind of adding in this extra kind of curve just by the, the teeth and the back of the mouth. And it just gives you a starting point when you start to cut out the, um, the indent into the mouth section. So I'm just going over that a little bit heavier. <clears throat> there you go. So you're ready to begin. Now, I don't often use a scalpel. I often use the floristry knife, which you'll have seen me use on pretty much all of my my um, previous tutorials, just because it, it's such a great tool and really cheap to pick up um, and great for kind of carving the edges. But because I'm trying to get into quite a fine section here, the scalpel is much, much better because it's obviously it's a much thinner blade um it's got more of a pointier edge so it's just easier to kind of get into those those kind of crevices if you like so all you're going to do is you're just going to go over the lines and you're just kind of moving the blade up and down almost in kind of a saw like motion and you're going to do that over basically just where the edge of the mouth is so i'm just bringing that a bit closer to the camera just to see if you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier so just nice and slow kind of up and down around the teeth around the mouth and do make sure you get a nice neat corner 
because it'll be easier a bit later on. So I've done that all over pretty much. The only bit I missed out is the corner tooth. Now the corner tooth is a bit tricky because it's on a corner. So you might have to kind of cut away at an angle. So rather than going straight in up and down um, at a kind of 90 degree angle, as you saw me do earlier, um, I'm having to kind of cut away a little bit. Um, and I'm just leaving a bit of an edge and it just gives me a little bit of room to play with. If you don't do that, you might find you actually cut away too much of that corner tooth. Um, and I did that a little bit on my first attempt. So just a little word of warning there. Just be careful when you get to the corner. So when you come to then start to remove the the mouth section, it takes a little while to do this. So you're just using the blade, but at an angle and you're just cutting into where you've previously cut. So you've kind of cut up and down and then you're kind of cutting in at an angle and you're going to repeat that all the way around. And you just kind of flick up the bits of styrofoam that you don't need as you kind of cut them away. And it just means you're going to get a nicer edge and a nicer finish. So just kind of chipping away at these little sections. Obviously some bits are more trickier than others. But as long as you're cutting at an angle, it should meet with the cuts that you've already made. And then you would just kind of remove those sections quite easily. So you can see how I've done that on the front side and on the side. And it's kind of left um, a kind of a raised section in the middle. Now, what I've decided to do is to actually make the mouth a little bit deeper. So I'm just repeating the whole process again. So I'm starting with the edge and I'm moving all the way around. And then I'm cutting at an angle to kind of remove more of the styrofoam. And it just gives me a, a deeper cut. You might be quite happy with the first cut. That's absolutely fine. You could stop there. You don't have to go quite as deep as I'm going here. Um, I just felt it created, again, more kind of shadows. Um, and it just gives more of a three-dimensional feel. So that's why I decided to repeat the process twice. So now to get rid of all these extra sections that have kind of been left upright, which you can't really cut out with the styrofoam, I'm uh, sorry, with the scalpel, because it's quite hard to get to. So actually using the flat end of a mini file, you can literally just kind of pull it away because the end of the file has actually got that kind of rough edge as well. So it's not smooth. It acts as a mini file in itself, if you like. So it's kind of sanding down. Um, those kind of sections so just gently and it is worthwhile pointing that out it's important that you do this bit quite gently if you're going in too heavy-handed with this you could take away too much um, or cause damage you do have to remember styrofoam is quite soft so it's quite easy um, to damage so again you're just using the side to get into some of these kind of smaller sections and you can see how easy there it's pulling off these larger chunks. Now, as you start to do this, it can be a little bit scary, a bit intimidating, because you wonder if you're causing a bit more damage than you should. But don't worry too much about it. As you put away the bigger sections, you'll start to feel then where it gets um, kind of easier to kind of create that kind of smooth finish. You'll feel it kind of getting smoother as you go along. And as you start to get a smoother finish, you want to then start to press lighter with the file. So don't use so much pressure, just nice and gentle, backwards and forwards. Just using the very tip of the flat ended file to kind of create that kind of smooth effect. Now, it won't go really smooth, but do remember this is, or oh, it's meant to replicate kind of a, a sculpture out of rock. So it wouldn't be perfectly smooth. So just holding a light up to there so you can see on the left hand side how much smoother that is compared to the right hand side. So as I said, by going in first 
pulling off all the bigger chunks and then going in a little bit gentler you'll get a nicer finish and then of course you repeat exactly the same method for the front of the sculpt as well there might be in some occasions because often when you buy these mini files they come in a set you might need to use some of the um, the different types of files that are within there so obviously feel free to do that particularly to get into some of those corners um, it's worthwhile some, using some of the punctier uh, files to do that okay so i'm just adding the finishing touches to the front here Though again, as I said earlier, styrofoam is quite soft. There will be occasions where you make an indent where you didn't wish to, or you may be a bit heavy handed with a scalpel and cut away a section again that you didn't wish to, like I did with one of the teeth. Um, again, don't worry too much about this. This is meant to be like an ancient statue. So there will be bits that have kind of crumbled, bits that have started to crack. Um, so yeah, it all adds to the effect. So don't worry if you create some slight damage, it won't matter. So I just want to kind of curve the back edge now of this kind of dragon's head. So I'm using the floristry knife. You could st stick to the scalpel if you wish. And I'm just kind of slicing away a good chunk of that styrofoam just to make it a bit easier to kind of file down And then just use a larger file on this or a sand block just to kind of get it the shape and the smoothness that you want. And of course you do want to make it reasonably equal on both sides so do make sure you do that. And try and get as smooth as you can but again as I've just said this is a kind of a rock formation so it doesn't have to be perfect so now it's come to transfer the design for the top so for this is around about um, I think it's just over a centimeter kind of thickness on both sides and then used a glass um to kind of create the the circular section and i think it's like one of those vitamin c kind of tablet kind of dispensers uh, for the inner bit use whatever you've got so you know just look around the house see what you've got that's around about the size it doesn't have to be exactly the same size that i've used here and then i'm just using or adding two extra lines in there just add a bit of detail yeah, if you do make a mistake, just kind of rub it out with the sand block. And then once you're happy with the the drawing, then just go over the top of those lines, press a little bit heavier with the pencil, as you did earlier, using the template that I made. The reason why I haven't made a template for this is just that I do find circles are quite easy to kind of mess up when you draw them freehand. So I would suggest again, try and find something that you can use to kind of press into the styrofoam because it will make um, a nicer finish. And then I'm just using the scrunched up foil here just to add a bit of texture to the surface because I don't want it to be really smooth. I want it to look like it's been around for a long time. So just on the edges that will be seen, you don't need to do it every side. And then we just need to cut out the top of the eye that kind of meets with that kind of design work on the top there. So exactly the same method as we used for the mouth. We're just going to take the scalpel and we're just going to follow the lines, keeping keep it as straight as you can. Remember to try and get into those corners or create a nice kind of flush edge at the corner. Now, yeah, one tip here, from the template, the template actually goes up to a point. Because when you start to cut this out, it's really easy, as I've said, to make mistakes. 
I've just kind of given myself a little bit of room, a little bit like what I did with the teeth earlier. So I'm just not cutting right up to the line from the template. I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap and it just gives me some more kind of space to play with. So then using or keeping your scalpel at an angle, you want to kind of cut into the one side. And then that, the edge nearest, or should I say the line nearest the edge on the top, again, cut as far in as you can. The one I'm doing here, because my knife isn't long enough to kind of reach all the way to the edge, I'm having to do it in two parts. So I'm just adding another line and cutting away bits at a time. So you'll see what I mean by this as you kind of continue to watch the video. So I'm just kind of pulling away sections a little bit at a time. Again, don't worry if um, it's a bit rough and ready, you can kind of smooth all that out later. So once I've got rid of this little thin section here, it'd be much easier then to get rid of the, the back section. So I can actually get into that now. So I'm just going to follow the shape that I've already made a second time. So it's a little bit time consuming, but it will kind of create a nicer finish at the end. So just gently kind of lift away the sections that you don't want. Now it has left kind of these kind of little indents and things like that. You can just kind of smooth part of that out. Again, you don't want to smooth the whole thing out because you want it to look like it's kind of breaking apart and kind of deteriorating over time. But do smooth it out a little bit. You don't want it to be too rough either. So yeah, I'm just using a pointier file here just to get into some of those corners. Now, if you do make a drastic mistake or you kind of pull out a really big chunk and you're just not happy with that, um, I haven't used it for a while, but just regular polyfiller you can use to kind of plug in some of those gaps. Um, just be aware once you paint over that, it can chip quite easily. But if, um, if there was something you wasn't happy with, you don't have to start again. You could just kind of fill in those areas and smooth that out and then paint over the top and that will work absolutely fine. So to create this overall diorama effect, you will need to make two of these. And just the last bit here, or the kind of final finishing touches to the, um, the sculpt section is to just add some kind of indents to the nostrils and around the nose just to make that nose stick out a little bit more so it's just the same method as we've used already but i'm only kind of using the scalpel here on the, the actual nostril section and the very bottom of the nose itself and then we're just going to use the scalpel at an angle again Now we don't want to go in too deep, so just gently, just kind of flick away little bits of the styrofoam until you're happy with how deep you want to go with this. And that's up to you, you can make that decision. So because it's quite a small area, you're just using the very tip of the scalpel. And then rather than filing it, I actually found it's quite useful just to use the point of a pencil and just gently kind of flatten it down. So it just kind of smooths it out, pushes in. You can push that kind of pencil into the sections um, and just kind of creates a nice finish. So, um, yeah, you don't even have to use the file or sandpaper for that bit. And there we have it. 
those are pretty much our, if you like, our guardians, our stone guardians for our display based on an Aztec dragon. And here they are in place. So I've got a couple of the Dinobots there. And just um, a really good tip is to just to kind of create, give it more of a kind of diorama feel. These are from Ikea. So they're just kind of fake house plants. Um, but because they've got almost like a vine effect going on there, I just felt they finished off the display. So you can see I've got all my kind of Studio Series 86 Dinobots standing there. And I think they look pretty cool. So the last thing to do really is to add a little bit of paint just to kind of finish these off. So to do this, you're going to need um, just cheap, regular acrylic paints. You don't have to use the make that I've used here, which is Dale and Rowney. These are the cheaper end. These are the graduate acrylics, which are kind of aimed at students. So they, you can pick them up a little bit cheaper. Um, but you could use even kind of Poundland or, you know, really kind of bargain shop acrylics. You don't have to pay expensive. A flat-ended brush is quite useful rather than a pointy brush just because it's a little bit quicker but do feel free to use a round brush if you wish so I'm just looking at some photographic reference here to get an idea of kind of it's kind of the moss and the algae isn't it as it kind of you know deteriorates the rocks over time and um, that's kind of the look that we want to go for also going for a lighter grey than the styrofoam colour because styrofoam sometimes comes in blue. Um, the one I've got here is a grey but yeah it does come in different colours. So I'm just using a little bit of black with a white acrylic there to get a grey that I'm happy with. I want to go quite light on this. So again it's up to you. It will darken slightly as well as it dries. So it won't be exactly the colour that you kind of put down in the first place. So just water down the acrylic a little bit just to kind of make it flow a little bit easier. And just give it a really quick brushing over. Don't worry even if you miss bits. Particularly if the styrofoam is grey underneath anyway. Because it's always already got that base colour. Obviously if it's blue you might even want to add a base coat of black first or darker grey. And then go over with a lighter grey once it's dry. And some of the other colours I'm using there are Hooker's Green, Primary Yellow and Mars Black or just regular black. So I'm just taking some of the Hooker's Green and the Primary Yellow just to make more of a yellow green. And because the, the kind of that kind of moss effect um, tends to be quite bright, quite a strong colour. And then I'm watering that down and I'm just going to dab it on top of some areas. Then when you put it on, initially, you know, you go, oh, I've kind of messed up. There's a bit too much colour there. So you just use your finger just to kind of dab that in or kind of press it into what you've done. It just kind of softens it a little bit, um, makes it look a bit more natural, a bit more realistic. So just using your finger there just to kind of smudge that in, move it around a little bit more. And if you smudge it in too much and you want it to be a little bit brighter, you can just kind of go back and add some more paint on top. Again, don't worry as well if you've got bits of yellow and bits of green still on your brush because those different shades will all add to the effect. So it doesn't have to be you know completely mixed. So just to kind of, you know, dirty up the bottom a little bit because it's kind of sitting in the mud and the, the sand or the dirt, you know, for years, just using a little bit of that kind of burnt sienna. Um, again, if you put the colour on, it looks a bit too bright, just smudge it back in. And it's almost a dry brush effect that you're using here. So just a really small amount of paint and just brushing quite quickly and pressing quite hard with the brush. Um, just to kind of yeah smudge that in and make it less strong you don't want it to be a really bright brown color you want it to just like look like dirt and grime and it is important that you kind of add those little bits 
in yeah, just various places. So he doesn't look quite so uniform. It doesn't look like it's just in one section. And when it comes to the paintwork on this, you can add as much or as little as you want it to your preference. So, of course, we're only adding this to the sections or the areas of the sculpt that we would see. I'm not using the paint all over. Because you would position these either from that angle, as you can see there, or from the front, as you can see here. That This was actually put in place before I painted it, so apologies for that. But you can see how it works with my Dinobots in robot mode or in dino mode. Um, and I'm really happy with the way that those look on the on the shelf there i just think it kind of just adds something to it and of course you don't have to just stick to dinobots i think this would work again for many figures that you might have in your collection so if you think this would work for maybe more of an oriental theme even because these are kind of dragon heads so if you've got any kind of um characters that would fit into that then brilliant so that's all from me. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate you tuning in. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you next time.